talk about debt reduction, huge deficit. What are you doing to bring it down, to pass a law or something like that that would actually uh, perhaps mandate less spending and reducing the deficit? Well, um, this is something that came up, uh, of course, in the last couple of weeks with the release of the report from the Debt Reduction Commission. And predictably, uh, pretty much nobody liked what was in there. And that's because there's uh, nothing you can do here that's going to please people. I mean, if you're going to address the fiscal situation, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to cut spending, which everybody says they want. But, you know, then when it comes down to the brass tacks of what that actually means, uh, they're not quite so enthusiastic about it. Or you raise taxes. Um, the other thing you need to do, of course, is equally unpopular, which is get the entitlements under control, get the uh, Medicare and Social Security systems sustainable. And again, that's a very, very difficult discussion to have, but one that we need to. It, right now, what we need is a plan. We just need to indicate to the world that we're serious about this, that we've got the political will to take the hard decisions, and then over a period of five, ten years, implement the measures that aren't going to be easy, but that need to be done. Your victory in November caught the eye of a lot of politicos in the state who are now talking about you as a potential candidate for the U.S. Senate in 2012. I mean, the Democrats are going to have to look to somebody. We know that Chris Murphy's been interested. Joe Courtney has said he's interested. Rosa DeLore has ruled it out. Uh, Congressman Larson has ruled it out. We've got a few others as well. What about Jim Himes? Where do you stand on this? <laughs> you might want to check with Mary Himes on this issue. And in the interest of preserving my marriage, the answer to that is almost certainly no. No, look, I... I uh, so you're ruling it out. Well, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm two years into this job. I've got a lot to do. I sit on financial services. I've been able to get a lot done there. We've got a lot yet to do with things like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. I feel very comfortable and like I've got a role to play. Uh, so, no, I don't imagine that I'm running for uh, U.S. Senate. And apart from the fact that my very good friend Chris Murphy has indicated an interest in doing so, I just, uh, and, you know, who knows? Who knows who's running? So you're ruling it out? I'm ruling it out. Ruling it out. Okay. What if they came to you and he said he wasn't going to run? You know, if the situation changed, certainly, you know, let's imagine a world where, where, where Chris and, you know, another handful of people said they weren't going to run, I'd consider it. But I just, it doesn't feel right right now. I've got an awful lot of work to do in this job that I'm still new in. <laughs> so we're looking, how do you think Joe Lieberman's beatable? Uh, you know, look, I, uh, I'm, I, uh, you, you, you pointed out at the beginning of the program that the pundits were wrong about this race, and you know, I'm, I'm a bad pundit, so I'm, I'm likely to be wrong. Um, look, Joe's numbers are not uh, are not all that good on either side of the aisle, um, but uh, we're also a long way from that decision, and, and and you know, anything can happen. Let's talk about you're soon to be in the minority of the House. How does that impact your duties there, your responsibilities, your perks, and what comes back to Connecticut? Yeah, you know. Uh, people People ask me that question a lot, Dennis, and, and being new to politics, you know, taking this job for the first time two years ago, uh, the whole, you know, obviously you can get a lot more done in the majority or, the, or than you can in the minority, and I'm very aware of that. But look, I went into this job assuming that I was going to work as hard as I can for my constituents and to do what feels like the right thing. Uh, the first two years I was there, we did a lot of legislating around some important things. I was, you know, very close to the creation of the Wall Street reform bill. Uh, I know I'm going to be doing a little less of that. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, which is standing up against against ideas that are, are contrary to the interest of my constituents or, in my judgment, not good for the country. Um, I'll just have a little bit less of a platform from which to actually get things done. But, you know, the chips fall where they may, and you just got to wake up in the morning and work hard every day, and that's what I'm going to do. Let's talk about a couple other uh, issues. Normalization of relations with Cuba. Where do you see that going? Well, you know, <laughs> You look at our policy towards Cuba, which for the last 60 years has been to try to isolate them so we can just do away with Fidel Castro. And you ask yourself, yeah, how'd that work out? <laughs> you know, is it no. seven presidents now or eight? Right, 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 right. He's one of the longest serving. I mean, he's out of there now. But, you know, the regime has lasted longer than pretty much any other regime on the planet. So it seems to me that, you know, a gradual opening to, to Cuba in a way that is careful. I mean, let's engage with them more, but let's make it very clear that, for, that engagement comes with liberalization on their part. We'll give Cubans a taste of what freedom and prosperity can look like. And you know what, someday when that country is, uh, you know, a more market-oriented, more democratic country, it's going to be a huge economic advantage to us because we'll be exporting out of Florida, we'll be trading with them. So I, I, I think it's time for us to face up to the fact that we should engage more carefully. We don't, you know, we want them to change their ways, but we should engage more and really get them moving towards a system that looks a little bit more like ours. I watched you and the rest of the delegation watching Senator Dodd's goodbye speech on the yeah. Senate floor. What do you think his legacy is? How will he be remembered? Well, I think probably two things. You know, uh, Chris Dodd 
uh, was in many ways like Ted Kennedy. He was, uh, on the one hand, he fought like a wolf for his values and his ideals. I mean, he was a he was a guy who believed in first and foremost standing up for the disenfranchised, for the poor, uh, you know, for people who maybe don't have as many advantages as as most. And he did that for a career, and that's a core aspect of being a Democrat. Uh, on the flip side, like Ted Kennedy, he was also more than willing to form friendships and working relationships across the aisle. You know, he, he didn't hear Chris Dodd vilifying Republican senators. You know, he realized that, that, you know, compromise was required, that time had to go by, that you worked with people and built relationships. You put those two things together and you've got, you've got a pretty terrific guy. So I'm, I'm sorry to see him go. Briefly, I've asked a lot of your colleagues when they come on the program, what should be named after Chris Dodd? <laughs> I know John Larson's maybe a university. Other folks have suggested uh, buildings and so forth. Any ideas, suggestions, thoughts? You know, it's hard to say. You know, he's probably best known for the Family Medical Leave Act, which made such a difference for so many uh, people who, women in particular, who could leave their jobs, uh, you know, and really not worry about having losing those jobs because they were uh, going to become parents. Um, so it's really hard to say. Yeah, but you know, university is a good. I get hard to imagine a building, you know, or a highway or whatnot. But a university, or maybe better yet, a, a hospital. Something significant. All right, Congressman Jim Hobson, Fourth District. Nice to see you back here again, and we'll see you on again soon. Best of luck in Washington. Thanks, Tim. Ned. Lamont when we come back. And if you'd like to comment on today's program, you can do so right here. Scap Chrysler Jeep Dodge, with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Scap